Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. And greetings and salutations to you, Akim, upholding the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, in truth and in sincerity. I want to do a quick lesson regarding. <clears throat> uh, well, it's going to be regarding a number of, um, well, I, yeah, regarding loyalty. Loyalty. Um, regarding character. And uh, there's not many men who walk this earth and display uh, the characteristics of loyalty uh, in both character uh, to the magnitude such as none other than King David. Pardon me, give me one second. None, um, none other than King David. All right. Who, uh, this was a man that was, um, see, when you want to talk about the one who's near to the most high God, you have to, then you have to start thinking about Covenants and promises and somebody who is a if somebody's near to the most high guy, you gotta think about somebody who's uh forgiving. What is the most high? He's forgiving. Yahweh Shah, if I may, they're forgiving. They that's that's why we're able to repent and uh be forgiven for our sins. And this was displayed. In real time, not reading about it, or we are reading about it, but I mean, the, the man himself, this was displayed, those characteristics of um, loyalty and um, fidelity, those characteristics that's going to be needed for us to, uh, to be considered a part of the tabernacle of David when everything is said and done. We're going to have to enact those type of characteristics of loyalty and fidelity in our everyday life, in our circumstances of affliction. All right, our character is going to be put to the test, you know. That sword you wanted to stand in battle, well, yeah, it's going to have to go into the fire. Yep, let's go. Um, so this is the book of First Samuel, chapter 24. And this is um, when Saul is persecuting David unrighteously and, un and wrongfully. Saul, see, David, he was, um, he was more excellent than his neighbor. No, that's what Yahweh that's what, that's what said. That's what um, Samuel said. He said he was going to rip the kingdom from Saul and give it to some, uh, his neighbor who was better than him. Who was that? That's David. That's the champ. But even at that, David did not lay his hand toward Saul when he could easily, pardon me, <sighs> pardon me, <clears throat> he could have easily put Saul to death. Easily, he had, the, he had multiple opportunities to do so. But, we're going to get the scripture. Let's go ahead and read it. It says, um, <clears throat> All right, so this is um, 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 3. It says, And he came to the uh, sheep cots by the way where it was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet. To cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And they've been fleeing from Saul's uh, henchmen. And his in his special forces to try to stay away to to stay alive because they were trying to they was they was seeking David's life, so they had to go off grid so to say, so to speak. All right, verse four it says, and the man of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which Yahweh said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thy enemy into thy hand. That thou mayest do to him, pardon me, may to, um, thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. 
Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's uh, robe privately, meaning David had the capability. He was so close to Saul that he cut off a piece of his garment. Now, why did he do that? Because to show Saul, to show his Lord, to show the king, the, the Lord's anointed, to show Saul that well, we're going to get it. I'm, you know, he's, he's, the scripture speaks for himself, um, itself. It says, uh, verse five, and it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. So this man Saul is trying to put David to death, but because he cut off a piece of Saul's skirt, it hurt him in his heart. Verse six, it says, and he said unto his men, Yahweh forbid that I should do this thing unto my master. Yahweh was anointed to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of Yahweh. He had so much respect for Yahweh. By Shem Yahweh Shah, the Lord said unto my Lord. Okay. But he had so much uh, respect for the heavenly father, Yahweh, that the, a man who has been trying to seek his life unjustly, who has robbed him from his wives multiple times. He's taken away. He's he was promised two of uh, pardon me two. <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> he was promised uh, two of Saul's wives. One he was never granted. The other one was taken away from him. So this man was robbed. You know, just mistreated tremendously. His family had to be on the run. He. Because of this shit, man. He had to send his family to, to, the, to the Moabites to, for safe haven because his family was in danger. Because Saul wanted to be a nigger. <clears throat> All right. It says, um, Verse 7, it says, So David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. Saul was about to get his nose white, but David had mercy. Why? Because of loyalty. Because of uh, uh, loyalty to promises, loyalty to covenants, loyalty to, uh, to uh, honor, loyalty to order. You know, loyalty to or order. And he had faith. This shows a tremendous amount of faith for him not to kill Saul. Because he had faith that Yahweh Bashim Shah is going to take care of the circumstance. And that's what we have to, to do. We have, it's, it's going to be circumstances of affliction. It's going to be circumstances in which we've, you know, been done wrongfully maliciously uh, incorporated into a wrong situation that we don't deserve to be in. And you see, David, he was, a, he was a masterful warrior, and he was arguably one of the greatest warriors of all time, a bloody man. He was. He slaughtered, he, he slaughtered tens of thousands upon tens of thousands of people. But um, <clears throat> he wasn't a carnal man. All those bodies that David caught, yet he didn't sort to carnality to maintain the throne. So that should speak to you about what it means really to be a, a servant, what it means to be a king, what it means to be a warrior, what it means to be a man of the Lord. Because a man of the Lord has to be all of those things. And more. <clears throat> and the reads it says, but but Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward. And went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. 
So David made obeisance to Saul, the man who's seeking his life wrongfully, who, who had his family on the run, all right? Who took away his wives. And this, and this Saul is his father-in-law. <clears throat> Verse 9, it says, And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou man's word, saying, Behold, David, seek of thy hurt. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how Yahweh had delivered thee today in my hand in the cave, and some bade me kill thee. But my eyes spared thee, and I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is Yahweh's anointed. Goodness. So this speaks volumes, man, on how to conduct ourselves with, the, with order and the importance of order. This speaks tremendous volumes. It says, moreover, my father... <clears throat> And he called him his father. Why? Because he was his father. He was his father-in-law. It says, see, yeah, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand, for in that I cut <clears throat> for in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe and killed thee not Know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand, and I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. Mm. It says, Yahweh judge between me and thee, and Yahweh avenge me of thee, but my hand shall not be upon thee. See? It said, Yahweh judge between me and thee. And and that's what, you know, it's a Christian saying. Well, it's not a Christian saying, but they'll say it, you know. They'll say, let go and let God deal with it. And sometimes you really have to do that. Now, they do that in the sense of just being sluggard and lazy and not holding themselves accountable. But we, we're doing that in the format of, um, <clears throat> pardon me. We're doing that in the format of, um, Trusting in the Heavenly Father in times of uh, which our hands will not get the job done. You know, you know, having faith that the Lord will deliver us from circumstances. Um, yeah, it says, uh, You know, and I, that's 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 um. I could continue going on this. Matter of fact, no, I'm gonna continue to go because his his humility is being shown as well. David's humility, and this is beautiful. Verse thirteen, and said the pro as said the proverb of the ancients: wickedness proceedeth from the wicked, but my hand shall not be upon thee. Mm. Verse fourteen, after whom is the king of Israel come out? I mean, he was talking to Saul, like, who are you even coming out? Who are you even chasing, king? Then he says, after whom doest thou pursue? After a dead dog, after a fleet? David called himself a dead dog in the fleet in comparison to Saul. And David loved Saul. And he looked up to Saul. But Saul, unfortunately, was a nigger. And he was a demon. And Saul was a piece of shit, actually. And he's not the Lord's anointing no more. He's in the spirit world. Or oh, what? No, well, he's actually here. But Saul, was a, because Saul slew all those Levites. How about that? So Saul can drop dead. And, he, and that's why the Lord put him to death. But, a point, but the point is, trust in the Lord and don't always think you have to make something manifest with your own hands. It's only so much we can do. Uh, Sometimes when we go about, about circumstances being self-willed, we can bring forth destruction and calamity upon ourselves. All right? So um, 
I'm going to leave it at there. Uh, the point was made. I'm, I'm giving all praises and honor and glory and worship to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh, Shai, Bashim Rukakodash. Shalom, keep the faith.